to our channel, so today we'll be reading Walt Disney's Pinocchio. One night, evening star shone down on a tiny, vi on a tiny village. Only one house still had a light burning, and that was a workshop of Geppetto, the kindly old wood carver. He was busy carving a little puppet. Isn't Pinocchio almost like a real boy, he chuckled. Climbing into bed, the old man mumbled, I wish you were a real boy, Pinocchio. Jiminy Cricket overheard Geppetto's wish. He had seen how kind and gentle the woodcarver was, and he felt sorry for the lonely old man's wish could never come true. Suddenly, a shimmering light filled the room. Then a beautiful lady dressed in a shining blue in, in shining blue appeared. She raised her wand and said, Wake up, Pinocchio. S skip and run. Good Geppetto needs his son. Pinocchio blinked his eyes and raised his wooden arms. I can move, he said. He cried, I'm a real boy. No, the blue fairy said sadly. You have, li you have life, but to become a real boy, you must prove yourself brave. Truthful and unselfish, and Jiminy Cricket would help. The next morning, Geppetto couldn't believe his eyes. There was his puppet laughing and talking and running. It's true, Father Pinocchio cried, I'm alive. After the initial joy was over, Geppetto said, But now, Pinocchio, you must go to school, study hard, then soon you'll become a real boy. Meanwhile, Jiminy Cricket had overslept and now jumped up in a great, great hurry. He caught up with Pinocchio just as the silly little puppet was walking off with the worst pair of scoundrels in the whole countryside, Jay Worthington, Foulfellow, and Gideon. The villains convinced Pinocchio that he should forget about school and become an actor. But Pinocchio, cried Jiminy, what would your father say? Pinocchio said, Father would be proud of me. Soon they came to a marionette theater. When its owner, Shambolio, saw Pinocchio, his small evil eyes glistened. What a drawing card, he exclaimed. A puppet without string. The fox nodded. And he's yours, he said, smiling greedily and holding out his paw for a certain price, of course. That night, Pinocchio sang and danced. The audience cheered for more. A puppet without string is a miracle. But when Pinocchio started to head home for the Night Strombolio snarled at him. You're mine and you stay here and bang. Before Pinocchio could resist, he was locked in a birdcage. Oh, Jiminy, Pinocchio sobbed. Why didn't I go to school? I'll never see my father again. Suddenly the blue fairy appeared before the sad friend. That'll help you this time, she said, because you're truly sorry. Run home now, Pinocchio, and be a good son. I will never become a real boy. Phew, Pinocchio sighed thankfully. Let's go home. He and Jiminy started running as fast as they could, but whom should they bump into? Falfa and Gideon. This time, Falfa persuaded the gullible puppet to forget his good resolution and take a rest cure on Pleasure Island. You promised to go right home, Jiminy cried, but Falfell says, I need a rest after my terrible experience. They came to a coach bound for Pleasure Island, and it was pulled by small donkeys and filled with noisy boys. As Pinocchio climbed aboard, Jiminy saw an evil-looking coachman slip Falfell a heavy bag. Again, the fox had sold Pinocchio. After boarding a ferry, the coach docked at Pleasure Island. Here streets were paved with cookies and fountains brought in lemonade. Pinocchio soon made some friends with a young bully called Lampwick, who was always in the middle of mis in mischief. Jiminy was not happy. He shouted at the puppy to go home. Don't tell me you're scared of a beetle, Lampwick snickered. Jiminy was about to march off and all of a sudden Lampwick and Pinocchio groaned. The boys were sprouting donkey ears. It's donkey fever, whispered Jiminy, horrified. You are lazy, good-for-nothing boys. You're sure you're trained donkeys. They quickly dashed 
through the streets of the around the corner they saw the coachman herding a bunch of braying donkeys, many of which were still war boys. Hats and shoes. Pinocchio and Germany managed to climb the wall surrounding the island, but Lampix had already turned into a donkey. There was nothing they could do. With a lump in his throat, Pinocchio followed Jimmy and dove into the sea to escape. They had come to a long, hard journey home. By the time they came to the village, it was winter. They hurried to Geppetto's door and pounded on it, but the house was empty. Just then a gust of wind blew a piece of paper around the corner. Hey, Pinocchio, Jiminy exclaimed, it's a letter. Dear Pinocchio, I heard you had gone to Pleasure Island. So Fidgero, Cleo, and I started off in a small boat to find you. Just as we came inside the island, out of the sea rose Monstro the giant whale. He opened his jaws and we went. Now, dear son, we are living in the belly of a whale. But there is very little to eat here and we cannot exist much longer, so I fear you will never again see your loving father, Geppetto. For a while, they were both silent, too sad to speak. Then Pinocchio stood tall and, I, and said, I'm going to save my father. Just then a dove wearing a golden crown appeared. I will take you, she said. Climb on. Then she spread her wings and flew and, and flew until they reached the seashore. Pinocchio and Jimmy did not know that the dove was a blue fairy in disguise and that it was she who had brought them Geppetto's letter. When the dove was out of sight, Pinocchio tied a big stone to his donkey tail. Then he and Jiminy leaped off the cliff into the ocean below. As soon as they reached the sandy bottom, Pinocchio scrambled to his feet. Come on, he said. Let's find Monstro. We'll never find him, muttered Jiminy. We're probably looking in the wrong ocean. Jimmy was wrong. Very near them floated the whale they were looking for. Fast asleep inside the whale was Geppetto. He had set up a crude home from the ships and the whale had swallowed and every day he fished in the whale's belly but now that macho was sleeping, no fish coming, not a bite for days. Figaro Geppetto said morning to his cat. If macho doesn't wake soon, we'll all starve. Just then Geppetto felt a nibble. Food, Fogero, he cried, but when he, the catch was landed, it was only a cookbook called How to Cook Fish. It was a solemn moment. All felt that the end was near. And then the whale moved. Mantra gave an upward lunge and threw his jaws rushed in wild water. With the came fish, a whole school of tuna, Pinocchio saw Mantra coming at him. He held him to a fish and was eaten too. Soon Geppetto was pulling the fish after fish out of the water. He was so busy, he almost didn't notice Pinocchio getting pulled up on board. Oh, my own dear son, he exclaimed. Is it really you? They were thrilled to see each other again. Now if they could only get out of the whale, Pinocchio had a plan. The puppet set fire to a pile of crates. As the fire began to smoke, they jumped onto a raft. Soon the whale gave a monstrous sneeze. Out, they, out went the raft past those crunching jaws into the open sea, but they were not free yet. The angry whale plunged after them and splintered their fail, their fail crap. Geppetto was sinking. My son, save yourself, he cried. But the brave puppet kept him afloat as a giant wave swept them toward the shore. Geppetto lay on the beach, gratitude filling his heart. Then he saw Pinocchio lying beside him, still cold and pale. The old man was heartbroken. Geppetto gathered poor Pinocchio into his arms and headed home. Then he prayed. Suddenly a ray of starlight appeared. A soft voice said, And someday, when you have proven yourself brave, truthful, and unselfish, you will become a real boy. Pinocchio sat up. He looked at himself and felt his arms and legs. Then he knew, Father, look at me, he cried joyfully. The blue fairy promised had come true. Pinocchio was a real life boy. The end.
Thank you for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed Walt Disney's Pinocchio. And stay tuned for another book read coming soon. Take care, guys. Be safe and make sure you guys are reading. See ya. Bye. Bye.